uh, a, a win against that other harassing agency usually involved with guns, but it's uh, also known as alcohol, tobacco, and firearms, the right to make a homemade still in your own home. I didn't read this case, but I can tell you from personal experience, we've got similar laws up in Canada. And my brother-in-law, who was at one time working with a company called La Chaufferie, it means the, the distiller. It's like, no, the Chaufferie is the boiler room uh, because it was in the old boiler room, I think, of a big company. And yeah, it was called uh, La Chaufferie. It no longer exists because freaking liquor commission basically puts them out of business uh so w where is this you can you can now distill your own hard alcohol in america or only a specific in america state? in america so hmm. the the law that this was the federal government's excuse so it, for those that don't know if you try to make alcohol in your own home the federal government makes it a federal crime to do so federal crime to have a still in your own home well, Robert, let me, let me stop you there just for one second. The rationale is that in the stilling process, when you start uh, distilling the alcohol, there's a period of time where the alcohol that is produced is the poisonous alcohol. I forget if it's ethyl versus methyl. And you have to boil off the toxic alcohol before you can get to the drinkable, the sweet, sweet, juicy, drinkable alcohol. And there's also risks of explosion. So there were, there oh, were legit that's, reasons. That's not the grounds for the federal law. None of those are no, safety, no, none of that. Now, Then it has the to be with tax, taxation. Well, the reason is the federal government doesn't have that power. That's a local government choice. Whether the local government uh, or county, city, or state is concerned with safety hazards of having a still. The, uh, I mean, East Tennessee had some of the greatest stills of all time homemade out in the mountains and the hills and the hollers. Uh, and then the revenueers as they were then called for the Internal Revenue Service, come and harass everybody. They want to, I mean, did we still sing about it, University of Tennessee football games, that uh, uh, when you sing about Rocky Top, uh, the, it, it, the part of the song is about where you drink your corn from a jar uh, as it goes. So, but the federal law makes it a crime to do this. And so it's like, well, what's their legal authority? They cited three clauses. They said, this is just taxing. Uh, this is just our taxation clause. Of course, there's a problem. This is a crime to even have it. It has nothing to do with taxes. It has nothing to do with even collecting revenue. Well, they said, well, if it isn't taxing, it's the necessary and proper clause to enforce our other tax regime. And uh, and problem there, of course, is how can it be necessary and proper to tax when you're not actually taxing anything, when there's no actual revenue from this law? And then they said, well, okay, it's the Commerce Clause. It's the Interstate Commerce Clause. And we regulate alcohol across the country. And this was the excuse to regulate purely local activity, right? This is how you're a wheat farmer and you're making wheat for your own family. And the federal government says, we can prohibit you from doing so because it impacts interstate commerce. So the rule is you can regulate under interstate commerce as long as it substantially affects interstate commerce, and you have a comprehensive regime dealing with production and distribution, dealing with supply and demand, trying to actually nationally control the volume on the market. The problem is federal liquor laws have never done that. Federal li liquor laws have never been about regulating production, distribution, market size, supply, demand, any of it. They've never been, they don't care about volume. They care about other things. And so the problem was this didn't substantially affect interstate commerce that is systematically governed of the marketplace by federal law. So to the great credit of the federal judge, he's like, this doesn't meet the taxing clause. The taxing clause is not the right to, to control everybody's behavior forever because something they might do somewhere down the road might impact revenue. It's got to directly impact revenue. It's not necessary and proper if it's neither necessary nor proper. And last but not least, it's not interstate commerce if it doesn't even substantially affect interstate commerce. And there's not even a systemic effort to govern the marketplace for homestilled liquor across the country or any liquor across the country. So he said, federal law making it a crime. This is my favorite phrase. What they tried to do, he said, was Congress was trying to ferment a crime <laughs> uh, without oh, constitutional God. predicate. You could you could see that judge just snickering and say, like, "That's a damn good one." Um, oh, right, well, that's great. I mean, I'm I'm not, I'm not going to do it, but good to know a little bit more freedom.
what was I going to say about distilling your own alcohol? Anyway, you, you have to know what you're doing before you do it. So don't, don't everybody Dude, jump into the, the that business. makes gin or something. Yeah, yeah, my brother-in-law, and he had a like I drank some of his homemade stuff, and I was scared, but that's only because I don't, you know, I have no idea what's going on, and t- tasted great. He made oh, some. Way, he made some good. Never drink Chinese wine unless you're ready for it. It's basically moonshine in disguise. It's not Chinese wine. Made the well, mistake it, of ordering it at a Chinese restaurant. Ordered a whole bottle of it. And it's all all the the local Chinese were at one of the great R and D lounge, great place in San Francisco, one of the best Chinese food places in America. Uh, and I saw the local Chinese were snickering, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I'm in for something." And uh, you know, you know, poured a glass. I was like, "Holy moly, that was like Tennessee moonshine." But I was not going to let them. I was a snicker. I was like, "I got to drink the whole thing now. I can't can't order it and look like I'm some kind of wuss uh, that, that didn't know what I was doing, which I didn't." Uh, but just just word of the wise, unless you want moonshine, Chinese wine is moonshine. So it, it is it is like strong percentage. It's not fourteen percent. Oh, that's an understatement. Mm-hmm. Well, now I kind of want to taste some. 